So I've recently had a problem with cache management in GraphQL, and I wanted to show you what the problem was and how I figured out the solution. So we've got a list here, and we want to be able to delete items from this list, but we also want to be able to filter results. So if I type in GRA, I can see this song here, and we also have this delete option. And so everything seems to work, right? When you hit delete, it deletes. But the problem is when you get rid of this search input, it shows back up. So it's not deleting for all of the search results that we've that we've had. So it should delete from the entire list. And the reason it's not is because of the way Apollo handles their cache management. So if we look at in the console.log, Apollo client.cache, we can see data, data and our root query. And so we have a separate cached result set from for each and every parameter that's been inputted because the server is what handles the filtering, right? So we have a filter parameter. So I've typed in, well, at the beginning I had an empty string, so it wasn't filtering by anything. And then here was the filter of G, G, R, G, R, A. And so it only deleted the result from filter or from the query with the filter of GRA inside of it. So all of the others are not there. So this is a solution there, or this is a problem that can be solved with the in-memory cache. And we'll work through that together right now. Hello everyone, my name is John. Please subscribe to our channel for more programming and tech related tutorials. And also click the bell to be notified for any new videos. Okay, so we can head over to my GitHub repository. There's a link in the description, and you can use that, or you can just type it in. But we'll grab the the string to copy, so we can get our repo. And we'll go. I'm gonna go to my desktop, and then git clone the repository, and then we'll change into. There's a client and a server file so cd in memory cache the folder and then client and then npm install and then we'll open up one for the server desktop in memory cache and then server npm install okay and we'll wait for both of those to finish installing Okay, so they're done installing, and I'm going to go back one directory and open up the entire project in my code editor, and then we'll go back into the server, and we'll both we'll start up both of them. So npm start for the server, and npm start for the client, and our browser should open up. Okay, and we're ready to go. So let's test and make sure that things are working. So I'm going to try to do a filter. So we'll do evening star this time. And we'll click delete, and it deletes. And then if we get rid of one of the E's, we can see that it shows up. So we have our problem, and we're ready to solve it. And so I chose not to go over the code that I already have or the starting code, just because this is not a beginner tutorial. If you're looking at in-memory cache management with Apollo client, then you hopefully already understand some of this stuff, but feel free to play around with the code as much as you need in order to follow along. So the first thing that we're going to do is set up the in-memory cache and more specifically the reactive variable and in our index.js is where we would do that. And basically what that is, is it allows us to have a variable and it's, it's sort of like state, but with Apollo client. And so let's just show you what it looks like. So in our index.js, we have Apollo client and we have all the things we need so we can do a make var and so what we're going to do is underneath the well underneath the apollo client creation we're going to export a const and we're going to call it so we're, we're trying to filter so we're going to make a const called filter 
and we're going to set that equal to client.cache.makeVar. And then we're going to set this variable as the initial value of an empty string. And so now we can import this into our app.js file and replace our state hook with this filter. So let's go over to our app.js and set that up. Okay, so we'll open app.js and then we already have our use state filter set as the name of filter. So let's change this to input just so we can import it without any issues. So set filter input and then filter input and then set filter input. Okay, so we can save that and then we'll want to import the filter from our index.js file. So we're going to do import filter and then from index. Okay, and then let's see here. So I want to show you how it works first. So we could do like a use effect um, or we could just deal with it. So basically what we have here, this, this filter is a setter and a getter. So if you do something like filter hello, then it's going to set this filter const to the string of hello. So that means when we're over here and we are using this filter, its value is going to be hello because we set it like that here. And then if you just want to see what the value is, then you can use it as a function. So you could do something like const what is this equals filter. And so this would print out to whatever the current value is. So that's basically how the filter works. So let's set up so the filter is actually being changed every time the user enters an input or changes the input value. So we can do that by creating our own onChange function. And so we can call that maybe handle filter input. And then we'll create that function. So const handle filter input equals, and then it takes new input. And then now we need to change the value of the state to filter input. So we'll do set filter input and then set it to the new input. Oops, oh, I'm gonna capitalize this. Okay, so set filter input, and we also want to change the make var, which was that filter that we had imported. So we're gonna do filter and then new input, right? And so now let's test that out and save. And so if we open our browser, now, well, actually we're gonna need I'm not going to use the breakpoints or anything like that. I'm just going to do console logs. So here I'll do console.log filter is, and then I'll do filter. So hopefully we'll see the value here. So we'll save that. And then now if we type in stuff, we get filter is. So the filter is this filter. And so this is applied over here in our index. So now we have access to the current filter value inside of our index and we can use that in our in-memory cache. So I'm gonna get rid of that log here. Okay, and so I think the next logical step would be setting up the client side query. And so with Apollo client, we have the ability to create our own queries in the client that don't exist on the server. And so these purely operate only on the cache. And so that's, you know, that is a lot faster than having to fetch data from the server all the time is just to grab it from the cache. So that's what we're going to do with our query here. And so we'll go into GraphQL queries.js and we can create a client side query. So I'm going to call this const client 
side filtered songs equals GQL. And then we're going to create our query. And so I, well, let's just write it out first. So query songs. So this is the named query. And we're going to grab, well, we're going to create our own query called filtered songs. And we can signal that it's only a client side query with this at client directive. And we only need the ID and the title. I think that's all there is anyway, but that's what we're going to get. But, and so I'm a little bit fuzzy on this, but from what I understand, the filtered songs, I mean, it obviously, since it's only, oops, that's wrong, client. Okay, and so because it only has access to the client, it needs to know what to grab, where to grab the information from. And so it's going to look for existing queries inside of the Apollo client's cache. And so we need to tell it where that data is coming from. So we're going to need a query that does come, that does go to the server, which is going to be our original songs query that does not filter because we're not going to be using this filter parameter anymore. So ID and title. And so this is only going to be, it's only going to fetch data from the server once. And then every, th every other time this filtered songs is just going to take the existing data from the client and manipulate it however you tell it to. So I hope that makes sense. One fetch to the server and then the rest is managed by this filtered songs on the client. And that's, that's at least how I understand it. So now we can export this. So we're do client side filtered songs. And so we'll save that. And then we can use it in our app JS. So instead of using the query of filtered songs, we're going to be doing client side filtered songs. So we'll import that client side filtered songs is also imported now. And now we can swap out this existing query. So we'll do client side underscore filtered underscore songs. And then I think that's the only place filtered songs. Yeah, okay, so that's the only place that we need to do that. So I think we're gonna end up breaking our code. So let's save that. And if I can find my, okay, so here we go. And so we're not getting our data anymore, but let's see, let's do a console.log on the data to see what, what is actually being returned. So console.log data. So we'll save that and then refresh. Okay, and it's just undefined. So I think what we have to do now is set up our in-memory cache because what's happening is, and this is as I understand it, the filtered songs is returning nothing because the filtered songs query hasn't actually been created yet. So it grabs information from the songs and then it returns nothing because it doesn't exist yet. So we have to create that query first. So now let's go into our in-memory cache and create our in-memory cache object. So in our index, we'll create this object and we'll do type policies and it's going to be on the query and we have the fields, the existing not files, but fields. And then here is where we would create all of our queries or our client side queries, or we can adjust the, the existing queries. So if we wanted to make, sh make all the songs capital letter or whatever, then we could do something like we could take our existing songs query and make sure they're all capitalized but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna be updating our own or creating our own. So filtered songs is what we'll name the query or it's what we named it. And so 
we have some parameters available to us, so existing and args, but we don't actually need those. All we really need is this read field here. And now we are inside. Something's wrong. What's wrong? There we go. And then I think, OK, there we go. So we have our filtered songs query that we've created here. And now we need to get the existing songs. And I just noticed that this switched this over to key args. I want it to be args, but we'll we'll deal with those two later, or maybe in a separate tutorial. And anyway, so we need to get the songs, and we use this read field to read the it's like a result set. So I'll just show you. So we'll do const songs equals read field, and it's going to be songs. So read field songs. And if we do a console.log songs, we'll do save that. And then if we refresh, we get songs is equal to undefined. And then eventually songs is equal to the songs. And so I'm as I understand it, what's happening is it's getting, so this read field songs here is the same as basically saying, what is this? So this songs is what matches up with that. So we're basically saying read that result set into this variable here. So once we have access to that, the songs from here, uh, and this gets, the filtered songs gets, it from this songs. So anyway, I hope that makes sense. But anyway, we have our songs and now we need to filter them. So we, oh, and because this comes out as undefined the first time, we can do or an empty array. And so that will fix any sort of errors. And now we can filter. So we'll do let filtered songs. I guess you could do that at const, but it's okay, it's fine. So let filtered songs equals songs dot filter and then we'll do song and we'll say const title of song equals read field and so now we're using the read field again but this time we're reading only the title so we're going to say title from song so reading a field title of the song and we get it because we have title off of the individual song and so we're able to read the field and get the individual title so we're store that into the title of the song and then we can return title of a song and if you want to do case sensitive or case insensitive search, then we can just lowercase everything. So to lowercase dot includes, and then, oh, we don't have the filter yet. So let me comment this out. And so we need to get our filter. So this here. So we've already set that up so it works with our in our text input field. So now all we need to do is just say const current filter is equal to the current value of the filter make bar. And what's wrong? Oh, this is supposed to be in here. Okay, so const current filter is equal to whatever the current value of the filter make bar is. So current filter, and then now we can do return title of song that includes the current filter. And, and then we also want to lowercase this filter. Okay, and so now let's console.log the, 
And I'm assuming you know how the filter function works. Console.log filtered songs. We'll save that. And then we'll refresh. Okay, and so we get our full array here. But if we type in A, then we get only 16. If we B, we get zero. But if we type B, we get nine. So it looks like it is returning the correct data. And so now we just need to, well, we need to actually return it from filtered songs. So instead of console logging, we'll do return filtered songs, which is the, the array of songs after it's been filtered. So we'll return that. And then now we should have access to it. But in our app.js, we're still mapping on the regular songs. So if we do a console.log on the data, now we're going to get filtered songs and the regular songs. So we only want the filtered songs. So instead of mapping out the songs, we need to do filtered songs. So we'll save that. And now let's refresh. And now let's try to filter. So if we type in W, we get Wage War and the other ones. And so let's try to delete Gravity. So we'll delete. Okay, and so now we have another issue, cannot destructure property songs of cache.readQuery. Okay, and the problem here is our mutations hook hasn't been updated. So let's go back to that. And we'll open up our hooks. And well, because we're still using the filtered songs query, which uses the filter on the server. So if we look at our delete song item, we, well, first of all, we're going to need to import the client side filtered songs. Actually, technically, that's not true, but we're just going to stick with that for now. So we'll import that, and then we're going to set up our query. And instead of reading the query from the filtered songs, which uses the variable, the filter variable on the server, we're going to use, we're going to get the client side result set that does not have the query parameter, the filter parameter. So we're going to do client side filtered songs. And then also, we're not passing in a variable anymore. So we're going to get rid of this. I'm just going to comment it out for now. Just, you know, if you like it there to see what's going on. And so we also need to update our write query as well. So we're going to do, what was it? Client side, client side underscore filtered songs. And I think that might be everything. So let's try it out. We'll save it. And then let's refresh. Okay, and so we got polyamorous. Let's delete that one. So P O. Let's hit delete. And it's gone. And now if we get rid of the O, we can see it's gone here as well. So that's kind of cool. And let's try it again with the outsider. So we'll delete that one. And so now the outside, it's gone. It's so the bellman. We can delete that one. And it's gone. Thank you for watching our video. If you found it helpful, please click on the second link in the description to sign up for our newsletter, where we send our best content to help you improve your skills and stay up to date in the industry. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button below and the bell to be notified when we release new tutorials. That's all for this video, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.